Hello everybody and welcome to a lightsaber tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to turn lightsaber into a lightsaber. Uh... Anyway, we're going to be turning something... Here, let me turn this off real quick so you can actually hear me. We're going to be turning something into this into actually something cool like you saw in the beginning of the video. So, obviously, you're going to be needing Adobe After Effects, because if you don't have it, then I guess why are you watching this video for entertainment? Because you're bored? Okay, fair enough. All right, but so I just finished this clip. This is when Anakin jumps down and Obi-Wan's like, oh, it's you. So, first thing you're going to need to do is find the frame that your lightsaber blade is in. Also, when we are doing an ignition, when you have this, don't animate like... I don't know, bricks going into it. Yes, that will look cool if you're not putting on lightsaber effects. But if you are putting on lightsaber effects, it's just... You're going to have to work around those and it will make your blade fat in a way if you want it to look good. So my recommendation is just don't animate it and just see when you want the blade to be fully ignited. And then that's when you put the blade in. Anyway, we're going to be going up here, layer... New, solid, make sure that is white, click okie dokie, and then we're going to turn off this eyeball for now, and you're going to want to zoom in, grab your pen tool up here, and it's going to be a six point lightsaber, sorry I hit the mic, and we're going to be doing one, and then click drag, because you're going to want that arc, and then you're going to want to click one right here too, go to the top part, click, click drag for another arc, and then click and then click that guy and so then it's fully connected now if you turn back on the eyeball boom you got your white solid but as you can see if I play the video it just it's stuck there so how do we fix that well if we go back to the frame click on the layer I'm gonna click M for mask and then I'm gonna click this stopwatch right here and click mask path and go in a little bit more Turn off the eyeball. Let's do the next frame. Hello? There we go. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we just did the next frame. And so as you can see, you got two keyframes. And that's basically how you're going to be doing it for the rest of the lightsaber for your footage. Um, yes, there's an easier way and faster way with Video Copilot, but since you guys were wondering how I did it, since it looks different, this is how I do it. I personally think it looks better. You may think differently. But this is my animation, not yours. Ha <laughs> ha! Alright, so we're on the next keyframe. And I'm going to be dragging these guys back over to the lightsaber so as you can see it moved quite a bit so we're going to be adding some quote-unquote motion blur like what they have in the movie because as you can see here obi-wan's lightsaber gets fatter that's because it's implementing motion blur so that's what we're going to be doing my technique is since like this was the edge of the blade from the last frame we keep that there for now and then grab the one that's on the opposite end make it just a little past that I guess and then you put this one on this edge and then do that and so it looks like the lightsaber is dragging um, from the last frame it's very subtle but if you have a big movement it looks better than if you're having like this V shape I guess you could say so if I wanted motion blur it'll look better than having something like this because you're not seeing this frame that's over here yet because the last one you saw was over here so if like for instance if there was a big motion blur I think that that looks better than like your V but that's just me you could do what you want or you could follow me along with this but since there wasn't that much movement to this frame from the last one, I'm just going to keep it normal. 
and keep it right up against the lightsaber blade. Also, the reason why I use white blades instead of like the normal lightsaber rods, um, it's easier to track, in my opinion, easier to see, and plus it doesn't give off like this blue reflection um, to somewhere else. I'll show you an example here. Alright, so something like this, since it's behind his head, I'm not going to be masking like just that little part and then all of this. In fact, we're going to just assume where the lightsaber would be. Also, I'm going to be having it drag from the bottom a little bit, but not too much. And often, I make the bottom drag less than I do the top. And since this one looks like it's going upwards... We're going to be doing something like this. So here is a big gap or jump, I guess, from frame to frame to how much he moves. So we're going to be going over here. Assume that the end of the blade is right about here. And then do that. All right. So. The edge of the blade from the last frame was right here, so I'm going to grab this one, put it right about there-ish, maybe a little bit closer, and then put this one at the edge, and then make sure it looks good on top, and maybe drag this one out just a little bit. Oops. And I know it's cutting through his head, but we're going to be fixing that later. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. Now we're on to the next frame. And it looks like it kind of goes upwards in a way. So... Do something like this. Cool. So yeah, it's basically just a rinse and repeat method, pretty much. Um, it takes quite a while, but I think it pays off. So I'm just going to finish off the rotoscoping here um, when the blade's fully ignited, and I'll tell you guys what I do for when it goes in the hilt and then when it comes out for turning on and off. Alright, so I finished rotoscoping frame by frame to track the lightsaber, and I got this so far. But, we have a problem. It's not igniting, and it's not going in, I guess. So, let's fix that real quick. There's two ways I guess you can do this. You can have it be like the original trilogy, and just cut this out, so it's just like, boom, in one frame. But that doesn't look too good, that's just the lazy way. For the ignition, basically you're just going to want to follow it. By follow it, I mean follow your lightsaber hilt. Also, I highly recommend if you have the chrome ones, use those. Those look so much better than the new ones. And plus they're just shiny. Who doesn't like shiny stuff, right? Alright. And normally I tend to... I guess elongate the tip in a way. So, something like that. Boom. All right, so since I have a reference, Obi Wan has his ignition in one, two, three, then it's full. So, I just did one of them. Now, I need to do this two more times. All of this here. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does look like it has to come out of the hilt. So this one's like mm -hmm, about here. Fix that. All right, last one. And normally for the first one, like the first frame, 
uh, when it ignites. I tend to put the top two all the way down to follow the bottom two. And then I take this, oops, and basically just make it kind of an arc in a way. Just if necessary. So it's just kind of like a big bubble. So it looks something like that. All right, now that we got that, it's still there. So we can either select all this and move it out so it's not there, or you can do this by doing shift Control d If you're on Mac, it's shift Command d and then delete that, and then boom, it's gone. So we got the ignition. It's basically the same thing for the retraction. So follow this. And all right, so it looks like it's just gone in two frames. So I'm going to bring this guy way down. Probably to about, hmm, about here-ish. Oops. Here, let's fix that. Why does that look funny? All right. And now make it the bubble. And then shift control D, delete. And boom, now we got our rotoscope of our lights, of our lightsaber! I'm so voice cracky! Cool. Alright, that's basically step one of 50. No, not 50, but that's basically what you need to do if you want to track your lightsaber. Um, also, as you guys can tell, uh... I have a blue light up here to indicate that the lightsaber is actually turning on. You don't have to have this. In fact, this was my first time using this method. I just want to see how it looks. That's why this is a test. So there's two ways that you can get rid of the lightsaber so it looks like it's actually in front of him. First thing you can do, which is what I call the easy method, turn this off and go to your masks and then lock this one so you can't mess with it. Let's see, I just messed with the actual footage. So it doesn't allow me to click it or anything. And basically, you're just going to be keying out your subject that you don't want to have the white solid on. And then click mask, mask path for that, and then do subtract. Probably make this about one. Turn that guy on. And look, it looks like it's actually behind him. But if you do that, and you later do all the blurring and coloring that I'm about to show you, it basically wraps around the subject, which is not how it looks in the actual movie. Here, let me see if I can get a clip of what it looks like in the movie. So as you can see here, it basically just cuts off immediately from the lightsaber, and there's no glow wrapping around it um but you can do it the way that i just showed you with the mask on the actual white layer that's the easy way i did that for the longest time it looks good but since i'm very picky about how my stuff looks i don't do this method and i do the harder method the harder method 
I'm going to show you after we actually apply the lightsaber glow to make it look like a real lightsaber. So what you're going to want to do is minimize this. I'm going to be doing control D to duplicate the layer. And I normally have this duplicated five times, but I take the bottom layer, do layer, solid settings, make this black, and click new. And then you click M for your mask. Take this mask and delete, because you're going to need a black layer um, in order to get your color, I guess you could say. So then what I do is select all these, right-click, pre-compose, and whoever the lightsaber is associated with. Then double-click into here, take your bottom layer, go to Effects, Blur and Sharpen. You're going to want to find your Gaussian Blur. And then take this, let's try 500, mm, I think it might need a little more. Alright, so I made the bottom layer 600 on the Gaussian Blur. And then normally the layer above that, I make it half the amount I did the last one. So this one was 600, 300, make this one 150. And then for this one, I'm going to make... Five. That normally looks the best. If you keep that at zero, it just looks super harsh with the footage. And then you're going to want to take normal, put that on screen. Woohoo! You got a white beam, but that's not what we want. We want blue in this case, since this is Obi-Wan and I did have a blue light. So then what you're going to want to do is, once you're back in your main footage work area, Click on your composition that you made for your lightsaber, effect, color correction, and then color balance. And then find a good frame to see how this will look. And I have like my own personal settings that I do for blue. This is what I use, and I'm going to apply that. You can use these settings if you want. You don't have to, but you can. I don't really care. Everybody has After Effects if you paid for it. So I guess not everybody. So you could tell that it's kind of blue, but not really. What you're going to want to do is click on that Preserve Luminosity, because if you don't, it's just really bright. And this looks great if we were talking about the original trilogy. But since we're in prequels right now, it's like super saturated so that's why I have the two color balances so I do control D on this now if you click on this you can tell that it's like super blue all up in your face and so normally I will make it about half of what it was in the first color balance so we will keep that one the same 50 and then 15 10 so how I got this setup, I guess you could say, I just was messing around with it for a long time and was seeing what looked best. And I got something like this, and it looks the best, I think, and I just moved the composition. But we're still having the problem where it's behind his head, where the lightsaber's clearly in front of him. Also, just a, another tip. If I ever have footage where it's in a dark environment, the lightsaber color balance isn't going to be the same. Just mess with it until you like how it looks to a certain point. If that makes any sense. But we're going to need to now key out this lightsaber for Obi-Wan. And this is what I mean by the hard part. You would think that it's just the same as the last keying out method that I showed you guys. But if you can tell, there's all this blue glow that I have to consider as well. So I have to make sure that that is behind Obi-Wan. So I would normally go like way down here. Drag, drag. Every time whenever I do this to get rid of the lightsaber effect um, where I don't need it, I always make these so that you can bend them in a way. It's just... More flexible in that way, <laughs> literally. And I'm going to turn this off so I can actually see what I'm doing. 
after you're done rotoscoping your lightsaber blade and then you're on to this step, this step pretty much takes the longest just because you have to consider for the glow so that it looks good. Also, I forgot, I could have just shown you guys this example. You can see that the white is cut off and that there's no blue going around Obi-Wan's head. So yeah, that's what I'm replicating right here. And you don't have to be as detailed as I am right now. But like I said before, I'm super nitpicky on how my stuff looks. Because I want it to look perfect if somebody stops on a certain frame. And then we can do this. But wait, what the heck? You have to click M, make this add to subtract, and now you got this. Now that looks pretty good, except you could tell that this is super harsh. So normally, and stuff like this, I would make it probably about five, whoa, not five for expansion. Five for the feather. So it looks something like that. And I will turn off the footage to see if this looks good. Yep. Looks like there's no blue going onto the back of Obi-Wan. And then I'm going to want to click this stopwatch for Mask Path. And we're just going to be tracking Obi-Wan the entire time so that we don't have this blue glow onto his face or anything. If you are doing this method, of course. So, I'll be back with you guys once I'm done with all this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have done it. I have finished the shot. It took me a while. So it looks pretty good, but I still don't really like it. So there's a couple things that I would fix. Yes, the ignition and the retraction looks really good, but if you check here in the original, you can see that there's like this little, I don't know, glow, like flare that comes out whenever it turns on and off so I'm going to be grabbing my lightsaber clash and in the description below I'll be putting a link to a lightsaber clash that you can find what you're gonna want to do in order to make this look like it's really gonna turn on is once you put this in here make sure that it's over your lightsaber layer instead of putting this on screen it because it's not the best thing put it on add so it looks like it's giving light to everything if that makes sense and what you're going to want to do is kind of rotate this so that the two outer glares i guess match with it like that and plus i'm just going to make it a little more round Maybe a little smaller as well. And we're going to click P. So then we can track the position on this so it can follow. Also, I'm going to click R for rotation. We're going to be keyframing that as well. Oh, oh, oh. Also, for your clash, make sure that it is the same frame rate as your footage that you're working with. 976. So I got that, and go on the next frame. All right, so, and we're basically just gonna be following it. And it looks like that. Also the last frame here doesn't have a lightsaber clash. I don't know why there's four frames. But whatever. So as you can see, it already looks pretty good. Except, as you could tell, this is not the same color as Obi-Wan's lightsaber. Because this is clearly like a yellowish orange. Because it's a lightsaber clash and that's what it looks like in the movies. So we're basically going to be doing the same thing as we did for our lightsaber for the color wise. But... Since we're starting off with color, you're going to want to go to Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation, 
turn down the saturation all the way so it's just black and white so you get something like this and then I take the top color balance so the main one and then I copy that and then I paste it into here so then it's blue turn this back on turn basically everything back on Boom. Looks pretty cool. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. So cool. We got our lightsaber activation right there. Now for our deactivation, it's just going to be a reverse. So what you're going to want to do is duplicate that layer that you just worked with. I'm going to click P to take that off, R for that off. So we're just starting from the very beginning. But since we're doing this and it's deactivating we want the clash to get bigger instead of smaller so by default the video uh, for the clash it starts out big and then just gets smaller so we want to do the reverse of that so time and you're going to want to do time reverse layer so then if we turn this back on as you can see it gets bigger because we've just reversed the video so now it's getting bigger. Wow, magic, right? Alright. Now the only thing that we have to do is key out the clash from Obi-Wan here. So we're going to be doing the same thing as we did for the lightsaber. Alright. So M, mask path, change this to subtract. Go into the feather, make this about 5. Wow, that's still really harsh. Let's change that to 10. 15? Yeah, that works. Okay. Cool. Our lightsaber effect is now complete. Only thing I want to change just so that the lightsaber kind of stands out is change the video itself sweet my shot is done only thing I needed to do left is crop it and it's finished so for another part of a lightsaber when say like two of them are clashing together it's basically just the same technique as I showed you guys except you're not changing it to blue and only thing you need to do is track it with the two sabers that are clashing and say it doesn't take as long as three frames for the full clash it's only like one or two just cut the video down and it'll look fine and basically just mess with stuff see how things look and whether you like it or not but just keep in mind you do want to have the clash on add and not screen or else it won't look like it's a part of the shot but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope I helped improve your brick films in a way. If I did, please let me know down below. I always really appreciate feedback. Till the next brick film, I'll catch you guys later. See ya!